Hello, everybody, and welcome back to D&D. Miss Clickstein. Welcome. So, the party takes two days to sail to Coxport. And it is clear sail. It's not sailing, it's rowing. I'm sorry. You row to Coxport. Fairly uneventfully, the islands that you pass look just as badly damaged by the storm as the ones that you're on. You do notice that this first island right here, uh, as you sail by it, you see maybe three dozen, excuse me, three dozen crabmen lounging on the sandy shore of the beach, just kind of like basking in the sun. Um, the other on islands, which island? I didn't see the ping. The the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a lot of crabmen. We've a been lot really of lucky. Men. Um, other islands that you go past don't have any or will have some crabmen about. These small islands over in this area were the less inhabited. I think some of them didn't even have people, but as you crop past other islands, you can see uh, maybe, you know, this one over here has got a small village on it that looks to be in decent shape. Uh, you see some fishing boats out there. Uh, some of these others have crabmen. Some of these others, you actually, this one you pass right here that I'm pointing at now. Is that on stream? No, I yeah. should show everything oh. to the stream. How about that? Um, this island right here has a destroyed village with no sign of people. This one has, as I said before, fishing boats out in the water. This one right here is covered in crab men. So you see a nice mix of survivors and completely overrun islands. Um, I have no way of noting this right now, but can I make a, like... Can I make a map in my sketchbook of the things we see on these islands for future reference? Uh, you can mark anything on the map that you would like. Just go ahead and draw. Well, I want to. I want to be able to remember, like later on, and be like, "Let's go to the island with whatever." Yeah, but, but I'm saying um, just draw something on the map oh, that reminds okay. you. So I'm, there was... the reason I said I don't have any because, like, I'm on a touchpad that I can't use very. I well. can draw. I can draw. So... I can draw for you. Okay. Draw, so that's the How do you crab do the font on Roll20? That's I mean, the Crab Ireland, right? Good I job. Don't, Wait, I think only the DM pincer? can write. Oh, no, it's under the, oh. the pen tool. So there's the, the crabs. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's oh, that's a good crab. Boats. No, that one's uninhabited. Oh, that's not the boats. The crab. That's the, yeah, the boats are down one island. You can move your oh. drawing. Just select it and move it. Oh, really? Select move. Oh, oh crap! It's only bringing a part of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here you go. All right. But that's the wrong <laughs> island. Coxport. That's the wrong island again. Yes, I had moved it to the right island, and then you moved it to the wrong island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what was the last one? I did the crab. I did the boat. The abandoned village. Well, oh. abandoned, destroyed, something like that. Um, you do see other crabs, but this seems to be the most like the island where they're all basking yeah. and enjoying their the time. crabbiest island. Mm -hmm. And where is the black hole with the crab protector? It's already circled up here. What? Well, I don't see a circle. You don't see a circle there? No. <laughs> I can draw something. That's, that's because I have it on the wrong layer. So Boom! Now the there should be a circle hole. there. Yeah. Okay. There is. Good. Okay, and where are the mermaids? Is it the green spot or the blue spot? It's green this spot, spot. I guess. Do you not there see was no indicator. There? The one the that blue I'm pinging? Spot, right? No, no, You're the, not the, the... No, that's the wrong tool. This spot. Oh. Yeah, it's that tan spot, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, anyway, you arrive in Coxport. Coxport. Okay. Uh, it is a large bustling town on an island in the Bay of the Shallow Sea. It is quite near Kirschwick in the Kingdom of Farnelia. Um, and as you arrive in the docks of Coxport, it is a bizzling, uh, bustling busy day. Bizzling is not a word. Um, Neil, where nice. did I get banished from before? I actually uh, sent you a message asking you that and never got a reply. <laughs> Uh, let me try to remember. Yeah. I think... I think I was in, like, the King's Landing of our land, but I can't remember which one that was. Well, there isn't one, so... I, unless by King's Landing you mean capital. Yeah, so, I mean that. 
uh, that's off the map. That's Wickthron Rarenta, and it's to the southeast. Okay, I was there. Okay, cool. I draw uh, the sage. <laughs> Cogsport. Anyway, I don't know you... why, but he has a baguette. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're French. Uh, you arrive in Cogsport. It is a busy, uh, busy port town. People <laughs> are moving all over the place. Apparently, I can't speak. Okay, as someone who's done merchant things in the past, kind of, I do the uh, merchant thing of we land and we want to trade. Is there like some kind of etiquette for that? Yes. Well, first off, you have to dock your ship on the pier, which is not a difficult thing to do, but there are fees associated with it. Oh. Yes. Oh, how much uh, gold did we get from... We brought all of the gold from yeah. uh, Oh, that's New right. Island. I forgot about that. Yeah, and did they find anything in town? Like, are they giving us... Uh, they brought with them any supplies that you could trade away. Uh, you guys have 350 gold. Bruno, you can hold it. Okay, we have 349 gold. I give Jen one. I give Albert one, really. Wait, that's not your gold. That's the ship's gold. You can't pay her out of the ship's gold. Unless you split that three ways and give each of us our share, but then it's not really the town's gold, then it's just our gold. If you want us to take the town's gold... Okay, I, I owe get... you all one-third gold. I give Albert one gold. What? Because it is, I'm taking an advanced share, and but it's actually supposed to be divided between the three of us, so now it's one-third gold that I owe. So you're okay with taking the town's gold for ourselves? It's one gold. Okay. But then I want my third share right now. Okay, anyway. I give all three of <laughs> I give those two one gold. We now have 348 gold. Guys, we need to make some progress here. We can't get stuck in Coxport. <laughs> I, I refuse and I say, no, this is the gold we're using for the town. Pay us later. And I walk okay. out. Okay. I guess you still owe me. <laughs> okay. okay. There's interest, so, by the way. It costs three gold a day to dock a ship this size here. And in order for them to care for all of your slaves, which is a standard process, there's a big slave house or a big um, mm -hmm. warehouse built on the side of the docks where these things happen. You, know, you, you just take your slave rowers and you put them in there and they feed them and house them and care for them while you're off doing your business. Uh, it's a common feature they have here. It costs mm -hmm. one silver a day for each slave and three gold a day for your ship. So I brought my peacock and I asked them to take care of my peacock too. <sighs> peacock is going to be in trouble soon. Um, they just tell peacock you. Peacock named bird. Right. They, they tell you they'll take care of the peacock. Um, but you guys owe. I, I hold my sword to them and I say, if anything you happens. Draw your to weapon? Bird, no. I put my hand on my sword. Okay. And I say. If anything happens to Bird, I will be very displeased. Please take good care of him. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. All right, so I guess we pay. Yeah, so you owe 5.8 gold per day. You can just pay when you leave Coxport. Um, anyway, All right. your slave is yeah. chained up with the rest of them. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go... Well, can I unchain him? Yeah, the people here have the proper tools to bend and do all the things that they need. So they. All right, so I unchain the special one. Mm -hmm. What's his name again? Steve. 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 Okay. Here you go, Sleeve. Sleeve. Steve. He takes you to his cousin. Uh, his cousin, Martha, named after... What are we doing? Do we go with her? I hope so. Yeah, okay. you're welcome. All right. Then did she explain to us what's happening? Because we didn't know about Steve and his stage cousin before. Yeah, yeah I already she told, did. She told us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Steve takes you to his cousin. It's way up the hill of Coxport. Actually, actually 
to give you a little description of Coxport. In addition to being a bustling town, Coxport is a fortified city. There's a big wall that goes all the way around it. Only the docks are open and the town is kind of built into a hillside with the more affluent people being up on the hill and the poor people being down below. The roads throughout town are nice and paved with cobblestones and the dock area has many tall buildings, narrow streets and lots of people moving around, shoving past each other. The town population is in the thousands and it is quite different than Voluton. Uh, you know, tall buildings, good streets, lots of trees, very fine clothing all over the place. You see town guards marching together in troops about. You see fancy nobles perusing the streets surrounded by their handmaidens, uh, and some of them being carried on little litters. So, so no sign of the storm hitting this? It either looks like the storm didn't hit this place or they've repaired it instantly. Um, it looks like a wonderful place. It's fantastic. Maybe a little crowded for your tastes. But Steve leads you guys up the hillside, kind of between these different buildings, takes a, a left at a certain point, walks you down. I wouldn't call it an alleyway, but a, definitely a narrow street, and brings you to a two-story dwelling that is you know, stuck up against these other two-story buildings. There's not even a space between the two of them. You know, You might be able to fit some paper between them. Uh, and brings you to the front door and says, uh, well, this is my cousin Martha's house. She's a sage, or at least she was uh, 10 years ago. I don't see any reason why she wouldn't be now. So, um, he knocks on the door, and a few minutes later, a short, plump lady uh, opens the door and goes, why, hello there, welcome to Martha's. <gasps> Steve! Steve? She says, looking at him, noticing his large collar that marking him as a slave. Didn't we remove it when he... Uh, you mean I guess you, not. you unchained no. it, but you wouldn't remove the collar. Oh, okay. That okay. Would, if you remove the collar, he's yeah. technically not a slave anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she looks at him, looks at you guys, and goes, uh, Why? Hello there, strange ones. Won't, won't you come in? Yes, sure. She steps inside and motions for you guys to come in. Um, I don't know what this business is, but um, what? Why is my brother in chains, or my cousin in chains? Actually, I would let him tell you that story. Joined up with the mercenary band. Went to go to Cuba. Got captured. Sold into slavery. Got sold back here, got picked up by a merchant who died, and um, now I'm picked up by these people. That's about it. Yeah, that's a great way to say the story. Mm -hmm. And we're here because, well, you might just find a way to get rid of that pesky collar of yours, right? Yeah, I told him that you are a great and wise sage and might be able to help out my new masters in exchange for maybe setting me free, hopefully, cousin, please. <laughs> I watch her face when he says she's a wise sage for any sign of like surprise or anything like that. No. No, and okay. as you look around the room, you see lots of books. This looks like a big library, actually, that you're all hanging out in. Uh, you barely fit through the doorway, by the way, and your horns cool. are almost scraping the ceiling. Okay. Um, Martha actually gives you a couple of looks as you walk around to make sure you don't break anything in the house. Your halberd especially is this long pole arm, and when you spin it, you know, bumps tables and hits couches and <laughs> knocks into bookshelves. I stand very still once I find a place to stand. Martha says, well, tell me about what knowledge you are seeking. I, I might be able to help you. Well, we've, uh, I don't know if you heard anything, but there's been a crab infestation since the storm. And uh, we've discovered this sort of uh, black hole underwater. And your cousin here thought you might be able to tell us more about this. 
Tell me about this black hole, she says, and as she settles into a big comfy chair and uh, picks up a book from her side. Well, it seems like after the storm, something has happened, and I know that some mermaids even got, I guess, teleported or moved or somehow ended up. You in don't way mean sea places. elves, right? You mean mermen. Yeah, I mean mermen. Are you sure? Have you seen them yourself? Because rumors of mermaids happen all over the world, but they're not native to this to the shallow sea. No, well, I saw them myself. We all saw them. What is a sea elf? An elf that breathes underwater and lives in the shallow sea. Does it look like a mermaid? No, not in the slightest. They do not have the uh, lower half of a fish. They definitely they're kind of mermaid. bluish, greenish skinned elves. No, we saw a mermaid and some oh, mermaid. Interesting. Mostly mermaid. Yeah, they were not there in the area prior to the storm. After the storm, we communicated with them and they told us that they somehow ended up here and they want to go back home. However, there are crab men kind of hunting the nearby territory. Speaking mm. of the storm, I'm sure you have heard of it down here. Yes, the, the shallow sea was hit by a, a, a tremendous storm. Thankfully, it didn't reach us down here. Seems quite strange. Yeah, it destroyed mm -hmm. our village. Yes, no one's so... mentioned sea elves in a long time. No one's seen them around. We were worried that they might have been damaged in the storm, or, or if they just... I mean, they're quite elusive to begin with, but... Sea elves. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're just mm -hmm. in hiding. Or maybe they got moved by the storm as well. Well, who knows? Anyway, what... Do you uh... know anything of this black hole, which destroys anything that enters it but seems to have brought mermaids here somehow well we don't know if it destroys things that enters it but we know that crab men are seemingly guarding it and they weren't there before either kind of just well, we them. also know that anything that gets stuck into it disappears yeah right we've Could tried poking it with a spear and pulling it out and the uh anything that enters it is just cut clean off you know Did we do that this sounds a lot like... She pauses, gets up, and hurriedly runs upstairs. It sounds like what, woman? She comes back down and says, You know, I have a book on something that sounds exactly like that. Why did you put a book on something that sounds exactly like that? It would not be a good place for a book. It would be wet. No, 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 no. I have a book that has information in it that explains and discusses uh, such a phenomenon. Well, pray share the information, please. See, that's uh, kind of how the book club goes. Well, there's actually a problem with that. That book, and that book only, was stolen from my shop a couple months ago. Hmm. Of course it was. How convenient. Of course. Interesting. Do you I know who stole it? No. I woke up Do you know where we can night. get another copy? As far as I know, it's the only copy in existence. I, I woke up in the night to some shuffling sounds. I, I came downstairs, saw a dark figure, and they took off with a book. I couldn't actually remember which book it was, but now that I have looked out throughout my house that that is the book that is missing that i reported it to the constable in town and they looked around but the thief was never caught if perhaps she says pondering to herself perhaps perhaps uh maybe... that's loudly snoring dog sorry no, oh, the character in the in the game. Oh. Yeah. Martha okay. has well, a I mean, loudly snoring dog. It's yeah, <laughs> she got a bulldog in the corner. Yeah. Oh, it smells really bad too. Oh, it just farted. Jeez. <laughs> I don't. You know, I couldn't track down the book because I didn't know which one it was that was missing. But now that we know, perhaps you guys can find it for me. If you can find it, I will gladly find it and return it. I will gladly tell you 
the information you seek uh, in exchange for my brother's freedom, my cousin. Why can't you tell us the information now? I don't remember. That's why I have books. That's why we have books is to write these things down. And I mean, I've read through this whole library and I can't quote exactly the pieces I need from any of it, but I have a general working knowledge. How does someone find a book in a, a stolen city? book? Well, we would need some sort of connections to the underworld, some sort of thieving like folks. Um, we would need, maybe one of you can go around looking to buy some illegal books or Albert, ill gotten can games. You use, can you use magic to locate such an object? Uh, I don't have any specific spells that would help, except if that book was magical. Was, was it a magical book? I would think not. Martha? I'm sorry, I, what, what, what did you say? Was, was the, the book, book magical? magical? No, no, it wasn't. Hmm. Uh, do you know who would know about such a book? I, <laughs> I'm only a sage. I, I don't deal in the black market. But I mean, like, how are, are there, is there anyone in town that's aware of? I had, there were other sages in town, and there were some wizards here and some collectors of things, but there are many of them. Well, I know a nice lady like you might not know too much about the black market, but do you have any idea of where we would begin our search? Are, do, are any of you thieves? No, out of character. In, oh, out of game. Yes. I am. I am. I'm sorry. Uh, well, thieves, you yeah. know all sorts of stuff about the black market. This is your specialty. You know how to make these contacts and how to slip language into things, implying that you're looking for things. Like, you have thieves' kits. You have the, sla the, the language of underworld slang. So, actually, you know how to get in contact with this, these sort of people and get involved in the shady underdealings of the world. All right. I'll ask her anyways, though. No, no, I, I really, really have no idea where, where to find these things. I. No I worries, we'll be right on it. Board. Thank you. Do you know if there are any books in the world that kind of help learn mermaid language? I know that might be a weird request. As far as I know, the language of mermaids is impossible without, impossible for humans to speak without the aid of magic. That's too bad. Do you have a title for the book? Uh, the book's name? Hmm. I believe it was a... What did they call it? A, a treaty on... On... A treaty on the void? Treaty... Treaties on the void by Marabello. <laughs> oh, I know that author. How do you? <laughs> Yes, I, I didn't. Uh, no, I kid. Oh, okay. Well, he's been dead for some time, so I. It, it was quite a quandary. Um, all right, let us go look. And, and hold on, before before you you all leave, might I say what a pleasure it is to meet a, a fine elf such as yourself? She says, looking at Albert. And I hope this is not too rude of a question to be asking, but what are you? She says, looking at Maribel. In what sense? I, I have never seen a race like yours. You you are not a minotaur, but almost? You are perceptive and kind, small woman. I am half minotaur and half human. How fascinating. Thank you. If you ever are interested in chatting about your history and about yourself, I would most love to chronicle your mm, your every thought and feature. I am impressed by this, and I nod. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. Well, you know, if you're that interested in <laughs> her, what we could do is bring you in our town. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can always use a great sage, and I sure do love some books. Well, yeah. I am not big on travel. 
Right. You wouldn't have to travel once you arrived in our town. You could stay there. No, 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 no. I am quite well established in Coxport. I have no desire to leave. All right. Let us go find Small Woman's Book. All right. Okay. Um, so, the f- Jen, you, as a thief, you kind of just know where to go to do things yeah. and how to find shady folks and that sort of thing. So, um, I want you to give me a an intelligence check. No, I'm sorry, a wisdom check, a willpower check. Let me check that. Me too. Well, oh. um, you're a bard, right? Oh, no! Oh, bad Albert. Bad, Back. bad Albert. Albert. I do I have some to... background in merchanting. You do. Also. Do you have thieves can't is what I'm looking for. Yeah, I as have a bard. Oh. Bard does not have thieves can't. So you're Crap. good with merchants and you're probably familiar with the underworld, but she is specialized in it as a thief. Okay. Um, so Albert is poking around. Oops. Looking Ugh. for a way to... Uh, get sad. herself involved, himself involved in the underworld. And you, you're you hanging out at this bar. Because you, you look around, you find, try and find bars, taverns, people, places where people gather to discuss the, the these things and kind of hang out. And you're down so at a, a little tavern by the seaside. Um, it's actually straight across the street from this very large imposing building that's got a little bit of a fortress kind of fortifications on it and two guards out front it's a inn on the on the bottom floor with a couple of rooms of uh, floors of rooms above it and there's a guy sitting by the counter that just kind of in your mind you know, that, that's the sort of person that you're looking for you know he's got little bit of a slouch to him but his eyes are sharp and he's kind of alert and looking around all the play all over um but not like overtly but you notice Mm -hmm. in your kind of sitting back and gazing at the crowd that he's you know he's alert to his surroundings but kind of relaxed about things and you just kind of something in the air about him you know that's the sort of person you're looking for yeah and he's sitting over at the bar having a drink all right. Hey there. Um, do you sit next to him or stand next to him? or uh, Let's get some I details. I stand next to him. Do you want us while to run you for this, very, Actually, I'm going to stand next to him while being very careful about everything that's on me because I don't trust thieves right. and he's looking shady. Right. Do you want us to join you in for this, Albert, or do you think it would be better to talk one on one? One on one. Okay, I'll, I'll take. Uh, I'll sit off to another table with Maribel. Hey there, he says to you with a, a sly look. I'm looking into. I, I, if I can throw in some thief scan, I would. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna talk to you. Sure. Uh, I'm looking into acquiring a book. Book. Have you heard of anyone who might be into collecting and selling rare books? Answer to Steve Scant. <laughs> right, right. Uh, maybe. I I know a few people about town. What in particular are you looking for? Um, I'm looking into a book by the author Maribello. I'm a collector of the Maribello series. He's quite the sage. I know a guy who knows a guy who finds these things. Mm -hmm. Could you present me to the guy that knows a guy? Or just the guy? Um, Well, why don't you tell me a little bit more about who you are? I don't really trust you. Hmm. Well, I'm Bert. I'm from the merchant ship over there. I'm just one of the crew members. And uh, while we're here for trade, for spices and dyes, I figured that I'd try to find more books for my collection. 
Hmm. Um, and you have the coin to pay for such a difficult to find and expensive item? Well, I mean, it depends how expensive it is, but I do have some coins. Rare coins. books are difficult to come by. Mm -hmm. I believe I'll have enough money to pay for the book. Uh, he nods. Um... I'll need to see it first, of course. And if there are many Maribello books, I might be interested in buying multiple. Hold on, I'm just thinking for a moment. Um, sure, sure. I, uh, why don't you step out with me into the alleyway back here? We can talk a little bit more plainly. And All he right. Gets up and walks out the kind of servant's exit or entrance in the back. I give a look to Maribel and Bruno. And we'll see what that look <laughs> does to them, because okay. I can't talk to them. Right. So I just give them a look, like... Okay. And she do, do you go you your head like this? Yeah, I just... The universe is like, for follow, so I follow. Okay. Yeah, I wait. Um, I make sure that he's out of sight first, and if Maribel tries to get up before he's, like, out the door, I stop her. Okay. And then once she's out, then I'll... Once he's out, I'll start, like, walking with her. Sure. Um... All right, Albert, this guy steps out into the alleyway, waits for you to come out and closes the door behind him. Uh, so that it's the two of you alone in this kind of dark alley. The sun is not in the, it's not the zenith anymore. It's, you know, on its way down. So the, there's no, you know, it, you're only in shadow and it's not too wide. It's maybe four feet from side to side. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, press my ear up to the door and okay. see if I can hear anything. Um, Do you have any you are in skill? a crowded tavern, Bruno, so it would be very obvious that you're like listening at the door, just so you know. That's what if fun. he uses okay. the listen? Detect noise? Yeah, detect, detect noise. Detect noise is for like things being silent and you hearing beyond the ability of normal. Oh. It, you need very quiet conditions okay. for that. I tried. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'll just loiter around then. So now that you're in this alleyway, he, the guy that you're talking to, uh, pulls a dagger out and oh, holds it surprised. towards your, you know, in your general direction and goes, all right, buddy, you're coming with me. All right. No need to get in a fight now. <laughs> as soon as I hear that, I charge through the door. With a, with a That's move. fine, right, Neil? What? I can that's right. Of I course, can you can, you can say whatever you'd like. I, with a mighty moo, <laughs> I go in. The bar doesn't quite fall silent, but you get a lot of churns and looks as the door <laughs> gets thrown open into the alleyway, uh, actually bumping into the... Give me a strength check there, Maribel. Cool. Hold on. Uh -oh. Back to D&D. &D. There we go. Okay, raw... D20 plus my strength, which is like 12 or something. Hold on. 14. Strength. Oh, really? 13. Oh. I think. Unless you know something I don't. Nope. Yeah, that sounds 17. Good. Oh, that is not a good roll. Maribel, you throw the door open and it like bumps into him, but also like bumps into him and then just bounces back like you pushed it open <laughs> and so like it just slams back shut on you guys i don't look very cool um I'm not and at this that. point jen you need to roll initiative as... yeah well can i act like i'm following him or is like if we need to uh anyway? no because i no need to get into a fight now and i, I was kind of just yeah but the door act... got slammed open into him so we just need to you can say okay. you're not can doing fall? anything but you still need to roll initiative can you fall over no dang no, he um, rolled way high on his strength so... check. It's like it hit his boot and just bounced off of it. Okay. So for initiative, what do I roll? Do I'm just thinking like... Do I, roll my do I roll my action? Yeah, but your action is to do nothing, right? Uh... Or are you making an action? Because I thought you said you were just chilling. 
Can I do a defensive stance or whatever, like yeah. a dodge? Yes. Okay, I'll I'll do that. And we'll so a D10 like, plus right, three. Okay. Nice. Ten. All right, so you get your defensive stance before he does anything, but as the door like slams into him, he recoils for a moment and goes, "You tricksy bitch!" and goes to stab you with his dagger. But it is a wild miss. It's just like comes up you from the side, clanks into the the wall beside you. Maribel and Bruno, uh, you guys go last in the round. Just the door slammed in your face and everything. What are the two of you doing? The you have half the bar's attention. Well, so I slammed in, but the door like bounced back at me. But I can I still go take a yeah attack at him. You you can open the door again and do something this round. But your halberd is a little too long to use comfortably inside and in a doorway. Do you have another weapon you can use? You can use the halberd, but it'll, it'll have penalties. It's a big, long weapon that needs a lot of space. So the, there's a doorway, and it opens to an alleyway, right? Short alleyway. But you're already inside a building, and you know the roof is only so tall. So, so in the alleyway, I would still have like problems using my halberd? Definitely. OK. Um, I scream out to Maribel, I want him alive! And I look at him, oh, you fool. <laughs> and I laugh like, oh. I think I have a quarter staff. Let me check. I would like That's, to. That will equally be as cumbersome. Okay, never mind. I. Do you have use... a piercing weapon, like a short sword or a spear? I have a, a long sword and a spear. A spear will work. Have... Do you have a spear? Do you carry a long sword, a quarter yeah. staff, yeah. a halberd, yeah. and a spear on you? Yeah. So you. Okay. I didn't really quite realize that when you arsenal. walk around, you're draped in weapons. Yeah, I'm not... like a, I'm a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I didn't quite realize how heavily encumbered you or heavily armed you were. Oh yeah. Uh, um. So I would like to use my spear, I suppose. Yeah. Although I really just want to charge through the door, like battering ram style. Sure, you can and do that just... instead. Uh, that'll be another strength check. Oh, well, like... then I'll just open the door gracefully like a normal person. Yeah. And then charge with my spear at his shoulder. Okay. Oh, so basically, I don't care where, as long as it's like a non-fatal spear charge. Right, you can just declare doing non-lethal damage. Cool. That's fine. I don't know so why I, I haven't rolled with stopping. my spear before. Uh, give me a roll to hit. It is plus one to hit. Uh, what level are you? Because I don't know if those numbers have been updated in a while. It I'm level be, three. It should be a plus two to hit then. Cool. Um, is that the same with my longsword too? Yes. It should be the same for all melee weapons that you're not specialized with. And the halberd is plus three. Yes. Okay. And then nothing... So that includes my normal melee adjust. Yes, that is your normal melee adjust. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. D20 plus two. Come on, big money. 14. 14 is a hit. You open the door and stab him in the side. Give me a damage roll. D6. Three. Three. Okay. You stab him for three points of damage. Bruno, what do you do? Maribel is standing in the doorway. I uh, I exclaim to the bar, uh, Oh, sorry. My friend had a little too much to drink there. And I walk out and close the door. Um, <laughs> well, she's kind of like having to fight through the doorway because the guy is just in the alleyway. I guess we could almost use Oh, that. she's blocking the door. Well, yeah. I'll just, that'll be my action then. Uh, I look at the, I look into the alleyway and see if there's any way where he can escape to now that he's facing a three on one and he'll probably run. Yeah, let me do a quick doodle for you here. Um, so this is our narrow alleyway. Here's our door. And here is the tavern. It's actually, the tavern's a little bigger than this, but we're going to use this for now. So the guy is standing... Um, I'm going to 
put a T for him right here. And we've got Jen, who's Algrund, is here. We have Maribel and Bruno. There we go. All right. Uh, please tell me the front door of the bar is the other side. Yeah, the front door of the bar is down here-ish. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, on the way in, did I notice that I can go around the other side? Uh, if you go down the block a ways, probably. But you'd have to go down, like... Uh, a few buildings. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I gotcha. Um, sure. I'll begin the walk. I'll, I'll I'll see you on the other side. I say as I casually walk out the front door. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can I get initiative rolls from everybody in the party? D10 plus your weapon speed. Um, if I want to try to, like, grapple the guy. Three is your initiative for that. Um, but he will get a free attack of opportunity since he has a weapon oh. in his hand if you try and, like, grab onto him. Oh. Hmm. What about disarm? Uh, you can try and disarm with your... Do you have a weapon? I have a... Let me tell you what I have. Short bow, two bronze daggers. You with the if you pull out a dagger, you can do that. Do you Short? actually carry a bow on your back? Short bow. Short bow. Yeah. Sure. So D twenty plus two for trying to disarm. Oh, so I start? Uh, no, just your initiative oh. is a seven. All right, he goes first. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's going to try and stab you again. Okay. And he does. What is your armor class? 10? No, it's 14. Okay. It is only a single critical then. You take two, three points of damage and need to make a saving throw versus death to see if there are any critical effects on you. Uh, D20 plus what? Was D20? Uh, just a D20. 14. Is that higher than your saving throw versus death? I don't know. I don't have it. You don't have it? Because we lost my character sheet. We should just do a session where we just write down everything or or I just browse things. Um, Probably. It, that is a pass. Yeah. Write these so numbers down I right now. It's going to be 13, okay. yeah. 11, 12, 15, 12. Okay. Done. Cool. So you pass. So he stabs you and then turns and runs down the alleyway away from you. So won't I get an attack of opportunity? You did not have a weapon in hand at the time. You are just drawing your dagger now. Yeah. Then can I throw it at his You time? may. Uh, you can, the you'll probably want to move and throw otherwise, because he can move. Or can I just take my short bow out or it's too late crossbow whatever uh you could take a short bow out and take a shot yeah you'd only get one hit but you one roll but you could um yeah sure i'll do that yeah. instead so it's uh it's gonna be a back attack yes so it's d20 plus five okay 17 that is a hit, and you are a thief, so you can get the backstab yeah. bonus. So roll that me 2d6 for damage. So it's 3d6. 2d6. Right? Well, my dumb... Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Roll 2d6. 10. <laughs> yeah. You hit him in the square of his back, and he topples face first into the alleyway. A few moments later, I think Maribel gets her turn, and... Uh, I don't know, Maribel, you kind of see this stuff shuffling before you. It's kind of the door is blocking most of your way into here. You're kind of stabbing through this section. You see him stab Jen, turn and run. And then as you're about to step out into the alleyway, an arrow whizzes past you. It comes toward me from him, right? No, from her. She shoots, well, him, Algrund shoots at the other guy. Albert? Albert, thank you. Albert, yeah. shoots. shoots from... Okay, gotcha. 
So he's running away. I guess I just run after him. Okay. You come out into the alleyway and find him near the end of the alley, which is much further on this map. Uh, face planted on the ground with an arrow sticking out of his back. I come up to him like, oh. Hmm. And then I look back at Albert and say, you said you wanted him alive? He started running, stabbed me, kind of a bitch, so took him down. At this point, I take his pulse. Is he alive? See if he's still alive, yeah. Uh, you did 10 damage. Yeah. He is slowly bleeding to death. Let's um, try to patch him up. I run up to him and I try to patch him. Okay. Around this time, Bruno makes it around the, the corner of the block, coming down in your direction. And you also hear the jingling of chain mail as two guards, <laughs> uh, town watchmen, appear, yeah. weapons drawn, poking their head down into the alleyway. As they appear, am I currently patching him up? Like, uh, Yeah, I you guys would, are like, leaning over this. I would have done, yeah. You're leaning over this body. Yeah, um, so I'm patching him up right now. Mm -hmm. Can I do my save, my check? Yes, give me an intelligence check, please. My away one is... Ah, fuck. Uh, it's <laughs> not going well. Bruno, okay. Bruno, try quickly. The the guards, weapons, so, uh, spears drawn, say, Stop! You there! What are you doing? And You're trying to direction. heal this poor man! Do you have a doctor? He's bleeding out. What a tragedy. <laughs> well, not really, because he's a thief, but... Let's... Good riddance! <laughs> well, let's still try to save him. You there, Minotaur, put down your weapons. Put put down I all of your weapons. <laughs> I, I, put it, I put put it down. All, nice all of your weapons. I, I put down my halberd. Don't worry, guards, guards. I put all my quarterstaff. I take a dagger out of my boot. <laughs> I like look thoughtful. Uh, the, and the sword, the long sword too. Bruno, Bruno, oh, Bruno, I take the long sword and put that down. All right. Losing I'll, blood here. So take a stab at it. Give me an intelligence check, Bruno. Int. Okay. It is for sure. Oh, you managed to patch him up successfully. Ah. Does is he still alive? Yes, he's still alive. Um, and what? at this point, you see two guards shuffling in from the out the exit of the alley where Bruno came through, or actually, yeah. Um, and you guys are kind of pinned in here, surrounded on either side by guards. So you see some faces poking out from the the back door of the bar, mm -hmm. and the guards go, "Uh, they see there's that uh, you you there with the bow. Put put down the bow. Put down the arrows. I put down the bow and arrows. <laughs> what?" It was such a tragedy. We came upon this man bleeding out, but it was fine because he was a thief and someone shot him. Who knows who? Perhaps it was the one with the bow. <laughs> well, and I the can arrows. tell you what happened because you clearly didn't know. I uh, didn't know. Well, this guy over here, I was trying to get a book and he told me he knew someone, but then he brought me into this alley and tried to stab me. <gasps> So, well, you can see the stab wound right there, guard. Well, yes, you can see my stab wound here. So I retribute him by, by trying to shoot him. Unfortunately, it put him down. But we managed to patch him up. So I guess that's how it goes, right? I'm not too sure about the laws of your city. But I'm pretty sure this guy's a thief because he was trying to steal my money. <laughs> Let me see thief! his dagger. Let me see his dagger, says the forefront guard. I let them see the dagger. Oh, well, it's covered in blood. Sounds like your story rings true. We had reports of a crazed minotaur stabbing people and breaking doors. No, you guys I snort. That would be another minotaur, not this one. There's not that I many minotaurs here, buddy. Fine people. I'm pretty sure people are just scared because she's a minotaur. Sounds reasonable enough. Hey, isn't that Haggard the Horrible? Yeah. Haggard. Hey, John, Haggard. That's John, crazy. John, <laughs> Haggard? Holy oh, shit. They kind of exchange some looks and go, um, you're not from around here, so... No. You're lucky what to be alive, him? elf elf dude. What about him? Uh, he's a known member of the organized crime family around here. 
Oh. Uh, who's been dealing in elf livers. As of <gasps> oh, that's probably why he Yeah, you. he was probably going to kill you and sell your body parts on the black market. Oh, uh, that's what he was trying to this do. This displeases well, me greatly. Yeah, this you need to be a lot more careful. This is not a, a safe bar for you to be hanging out at. Look, let me tell you, come with me. And the guards kind of lower their weapons. Two of them start dragging this guy away through the alleyway. Look, let me I send you to a nicer place. I kind of thinking about get. all the loot that could have been. <laughs> this, is, this is really a not good place if you're looking for books. Um, there's a, a library, and he just gives you this like, long spiel about where you can find the proper books, and you really shouldn't be asking around in bars, and what are you, like, you know, put those weapons away. If you don't know how to use them, you're just going to get yourself in trouble. And then he's like, wait, well, apparently yeah, I got a pretty good shot in, but yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you should really know better than to be in a place like this just looking for books. Mansplaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. What well, th thank you for bringing a known criminal to justice. What's going to happen to him? You're going to put him behind bars? Well, it seems that he's still alive. and uh... Should we have not patched him up? Like, uh, no, no, no. We, he will be questioned and <laughs> probably executed. Oh. Well, we'll have to take him to the, the king or the count to, to see about his final justice, but I, I presume there's enough evidence against him that we can finally bring him down. Mm -hmm. But yes, hopefully uh, we can well, get some information on the crime family before so what is about to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing. I'm glad that this got sorted out. Just out of curiosity, what would have happened if he died? Because I don't know the laws around here. Wow. Well, I think there would be some celebrations. No, I mean, if my, the shot I shot killed him and we didn't. <laughs> well, I think everyone would be quite happy that he's dead. Uh, nothing would happen to you. Um, you seem to be pretty innocent victim here. Although there's definitely some questions as to your associations with this man. It seems pretty clear that you were a victim here. As such... If she has taken down a known criminal in your town, is there not a reward? She says, reading chat. <laughs> <laughs> Got me! Yes, uh, there's a reward for information on his capture or information leading to him. Uh, all right, well, come on back with me. We'll, we'll sort this out. And all right. you guys end up going back to the constable <laughs> station where they, you know, bring the body, and it's a, a big to-do. Uh, but we are out of time, so we're just going to gloss over all the details, and you guys get uh, 100 gold for bringing yeah. a fugitive nice. to justice. Cool. Do you, so it's probably given to Albert, right? It is given Not to, to Albert us? for finding him, killing him. Does Albert, Albert share it with nice. us? Nice! <laughs> For helping, Albert, do you share it with us or no? Well, I'll give you a share that I believe is fair. A fair share. How much so, is that uh, fair share? Well, Maribel did hit him and this other dude did revive him, but I have to subtract a gold. Plus it's <laughs> two gold. Um, so I guess I'll keep... I'll keep 50 gold for myself, plus two, so 52 gold for myself, and they can split the, they can split the 50 gold between the two of them. Except for minus two for so, poor yeah. Bruno. <laughs> minus two for Bruno. Okay, so I get 25 and he gets 23. Yeah. Okay. Since I did the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. Right, I think that's only fair. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh I'll hand Marable five more for the one gold per day and probably a little bit more because yeah because it's only been like two or three days three, since we four, made that since the, the debate day. oh perfect then we're we're even I nod approvingly there you go right. as it should be thank you That's right. um, and I guess we will have to come back next week to resolve the black market dealings books information. And all of that fun stuff.
Fun. Right. We did a lot of role playing this episode, which yeah. was fun. And I know some of you like a lot of fighting. So don't worry, we do fight as well on this show, but this was a very like character building episode. I feel like a lot of interesting plot lines were very developed. Yeah, I think a lot of animosity was shown and some new yeah. relationships have emerged. I like super hate Donald Trumpet now. I didn't like her before, but she's like my nemesis now. So that's exciting. Uh, Bruno, can we ask you how you feel about Mayor Donald Trumpet? Because that might be an important factor here. I kind of like her as mayor. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about her as in us two together, but (laughs) probably not my type, but she's a cool mayor. I think she's got the backing of the town, so that's good enough for me. Maribel really likes that she thinks Bruno likes her better than Donalda Trumpet. Mm. And I don't really care for who rules at this point. For now. You'll have an interest in that later. As long as I'm the ship captain. I finally uh, put out my kind of goal, which I haven't said to the town yet, which is to try to move them off the island. Right. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm against moving them off the island. I think we should stay with the red dragon. So let's see. You also, got... my, my character is quite... Uh... So I want to explain why I'm giving gold, because I feel like this needs to be explained, because my character is evil. But my character also likes having strong allies because he's been thrown off a ship before so he's kind of thinking that by giving them money he's going to bring them closer to him ah makes good good sense okay so for next week or wait we should do xp first i'm doing yeah, xp right yeah. now so for settling a new population in your town which was going to be a future storyline that you guys have already accomplished ahead of time uh it's 500 experience for the party. I'll, I'll t- tally it all up myself and divide it so you guys don't have to do any math yet. That's 500 for that. Uh, you didn't resolve any new mayor-sheriff relations, but you did get into some arguments there. Um, you've come to Coxport and uh, started your quest for figuring out the, the nature of this thing, and you've met with Martha. So 250 mm-hmm. for that. You've gotten... Let's see, what else did you guys do today? Um, what what did you do today? Let me see. I made a deal with Bruno to be paid on contract to not kill Donalda Trumpet or any villagers. Yeah, we, yeah. We painted. We, we painted. The yeah. Grass. You did paint your ship. Let's give some experience. We brought there. all of the uh, Zuli Nylanders to our island mm-hmm. and well, got we, all their goods. We killed the guy. The guy? No, this guy right here. Yeah. Yeah. And got the money for it. Yeah. And I guess discovered that there was a thief society. We went to Coxport for the first time. Oh, that's right. You discovered a new land. Kind of, well, discovered a new land. Uh, you did learn quite a bit that these other islands have a lot of crabmen, a lot more than your yeah. island. That's have. true. We mapped the other Nation. islands too. And we mm-hmm. saw also where the ships were for future reference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Learned about some things, explored some areas, got some new people. Let's get some role playing experience in there. There's a lot of good role playing, actually. So let's give a higher than average role playing reward. And then divide it only between three people because there's only three of you today. Oh, is she going to have lower XP? She will have lower XP. Um, 800 experience for the party, for each individual person. Yay, 800. Um, is that plus the 600 so 1400 and all 1400 um, okay yes so you should all have the same amount which is does anyone know seven or uh, seven four three oh seven four three oh divided by two yeah that's what i got if we do well next time i'll level up again yes uh, I'm now, not un- leveling up soon unfortunately next week uh my flights were canceled for my leaving the country and the only flights I can book for next week are going to be ones that conflict with misclicks. So thank you airline companies for canceling misclicks next week. Yeah. Well, we can look into what else we can do. Maybe a one-off or something. 
We will try very hard to bring you some sort of content. We've had a couple ideas, like maybe trying to play yes. with side stories or give you a preview of some other stories we're thinking of or just do a funny one-off like we used to do. So watch Misclicks on Twitter, twitter.com slash misclicks, same as this channel. You can also find that in the channel description below. And also click follow on this channel so you can be notified when Misclicks goes live with more D&D or some other shows like ones about Heroes of the Storm, board games, and um, indie games mm -hmm. as well. And I guess we will pick up in two weeks in Coxport still. We might actually have to have Jess sit out that episode. She might just have to volunteer to sit out because that'll take you. We didn't, we didn't finish Coxport. Yeah. And it'll be a little while before you leave. <laughs> Can we give her like uh, supporting roles or something funny? Maybe something she could play Steve. Play? She could I'm play Steve. I'm to play Steve. Yeah. I think All right. Well, we'll keep you guys updated on what happens next week, but we will try not to leave you lonely. Thank you all for tuning in very much, and please follow everyone here on their Twitters, which are below their faces, I believe. All right. That's it, guys. Take care. See everyone next. Two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.